Hey crafty friend, I'm Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Thanks so much for stopping by today. I've got some really exciting news to share as well as a fun project that we'll put together for the Holiday Lights Hop. So let's go ahead and get started. Exciting news first. We have a brand new product. This is our one light and just like the name implies, it has one light. The battery and the switch are already there for you. So I want you to think of this as just a little flat flashlight that you can sandwich into your card and easily light up. Okay, here's a, a quick little um, card or tag that I made with this and you can see it's just the light underneath his chin and the buttons right there a little bit of foam tape pops that up super simple to use if you're wondering how that compares to some of our other products I've got there the easy light and the halo light here too to show you the easy light is very similar but instead of having just this one single light here it actually has three lights at the end of the wires and you can see when I push the button, all three lights light up. Please don't let the wires scare you. They're actually there to help you because it allows you to spread them out to wherever you would like them to go on your card or your scrapbook pages, whatever you want to use it in, um, and then just tape it down. Here's another little Halloween sample that I've got. I guess I've got a Halloween theme going. Uh, this card, I just taped my, the battery in place here with the switch. The little lights are there. You can see I've got my window backed with vellum and again the double thick foam tape here. And then when you cover it up, it works. Super simple, right? So just think of it again like a flashlight. So our one light, the light is in one place and there's just the one. The easy light, we have three lights. They're at the ends of the wire so you can coil them up um, and put them wherever you want them to go. And then if you've seen our halo lights but you weren't sure how they are different, this is our halo light. Um, instead of having just one light here, it has four lights. And notice when I press them together, um, you can see that this light on the one light is pointing up toward the camera. These four lights actually point in toward each other. And the reason is because the idea is to light up um, your sentiments or to create a halo of light. So on this card, you can see I've got a, a light up shaker here. When I press the button, that whole ring lights up in there. And I've got um, a My Favorite Things circle pouch here. So it makes this very, very simple to do. I stamped, put my little shaker bits in place, and then I put my pouch on top. And then I dropped a halo light on top of that. So that it just slips right on top of there. Figure out where your button is, cut your window, and then make sure you mark. Very, very simple to use. So those are our three main lighting products and I want to show you how to use the one light today on a quick tag. Off camera, I've gone ahead and made a light up Santa Claus. I gave him a bright red nose too, just like we're going to do for our, our reindeer, but I wanted to give you a kind of an idea of what we're working on together. This, actually I haven't sealed it up yet, it's a gift card holder, so you can see it would kind of fit underneath. and. The die that I'm using is actually from iCrafter, I'll show you that in a second, but it cuts a zipper in there so the recipient can just peel it open and it's now not just a boring gift card, you've got a fun little interactive element to it, so it kind of steps up your gift a little bit. So let's go ahead and make Rudolph. I have gone ahead and cut two tag pieces and let me show you that die set that I'm using. This is from iCrafter, it's the zip tag a gift, sorry, zip gift tags die set. And like I said, it has a little zipper that you can put in. So you can cut solid and um, cut out different windows. It has a bunch of options. It's kind of a fun little set here. Um, I went ahead and cut a solid one from pink, and then I dropped in the zipper and cut it again from blue. Can you see the, the outline there? And then just because I, I didn't want my little character to be on a plain background, um, I went ahead and cut a circle. Any nesting circle will do. Find one in the right size. I, I have these from iCrafter. But the Santa and the reindeer that we're going to put together are from the new My Monthly Hero set. I'm hoping that it's not sold out by the time this airs. Um, it's really cute. You've got the face so that you can make a snowman, Santa Claus, an elf, um, a reindeer like we're going to make. So a lot of options, it's really fun. It also comes with a cool stamp set that we'll be using today. And then I do want to mention that 
you want to indicate where the recipient should push. So I'm, I'm actually going to use probably uh, this stamp set from My Favorite Things. It's the uh, interactive labels. We also have this one from Happy Doodle in the shop. It's got slightly smaller words, so that's what I used on Santa Claus. But I, I think I'm going to use this one because I think I'm going to emboss it. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about our reindeer. I've cut him out and cut out a bunch of pieces. Just, I mean, I figure you guys know how to die cut, so I'll skip that part for you. And I've got a little dish that I hold all the little bits and pieces in. So I just want to kind of show you real quick what I've gone ahead and cut out and why. Okay, so I have a dark brown piece for his head. From the light brown, I went ahead and I cut the ears and antlers and his muzzle. I cut the muzzle one more time from vellum paper. Can you see that, that that's vellum? Um, because we're going to actually cut the nose out. Um, and put the light behind. And I do want to show you that some cardstock, you can see the light through, but uh, some things are, it'll come through much brighter, like with vellum. Um, and I actually have a scrap of just this red pattern paper that's been in my stash forever. And I noticed that the light comes through it nicely. It's a little bit thinner. So that's what I want to use for his nose. And so I've only just partially die cut that. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that. And I went ahead, so, okay, this is kind of neurotic. You don't need to do this, but when I cut out his nose and put the red layer in, because the red is thinner than the brown, it's gonna be kind of sunk in. So I went ahead and I cut a few more noses, well, just partial cut, and took out the noses from vellum. So that way, I've got like three or four layers here, and you see how the light will still come right through that? That way, it can elevate the nose, and, and the red will be sticking up, not just sunk in. So totally optional, but that's what I'm doing here. Um, I've used some, this is a great project for using scraps of pattern paper in your stash. I cut out his scarf. Um, they do have, in the stamp set, or, that you have two patterns there, so you could use these as well if you're just using um, solid cardstock. That would work too but i went ahead and cut some from pattern paper here and then there are some holly leaves which i cut out two of and i also partially cut them from some red so i'll just trim those out so that when i layer it up i have red berries at the end of my holly i did save the eyes from his face obviously we want to give him some eyes but instead of cutting them out a second time from black paper i'm just going to use a, a sharpie real quick and you can see this is a piece of memo tape, which is sticky. It's just like um, post-it tape. And I'm just going to use a Sharpie real quick to color them. It's faster than cutting it out of black paper a second time. And that way, our eyes are ready. Okay, so let's go ahead and start layering things up. First thing I want to do is cut out his nose. And... If I only needed the nose, then I would just use my scissors, but since I want to keep the muzzle and I'm dumping the inner part of his nose here, I'm just going to use my craft knife um, to cut it out. It's only holding on by two little sections, so it's very simple. Just two little, little guys and it's done. And then that solid vellum piece. The reason I cut it from the vellum is so that now I have something to glue everything to and I have one solid piece again. So let's go ahead and glue him down. I'm using PVA glue. This is in a fine line bottle. I also like the Barely Arts glue and Gina K Connect. Those are great. But for paper to paper, I tend to reach for wet glues because it gives me that wiggle room. And I think I'm going to use some tweezers just to get my fingers out of the way. This glue does dry clear. And I'm going to put a couple layers on. I've, I've cut out four of them. You may not need to use all four. Um, I just want to get it at least flush so that when I put his nose, the red nose on, it's the same height or a little bit taller. 
Again, that's totally optional. And if you found some pattern paper in your stash or other papers in your stash that are already the same thickness, you don't need to do this. I just didn't want his nose to be an innie. It should be an outie. <laughs> All right, so four layers here. And because I'm using that wet glue, I have a little bit of that wiggle time in case I need to move him around a little bit. And then for that red nose, remember I've already partially die cut. And because it's pattern paper, for me, it's a little bit tricky to see. So I'm just going to kind of pull it out there. And now I can trim it. Make sure that it's those little tabs that we're holding it are cleaned up. And then I'll glue this in place as well. And then we'll just double check to make sure that the light is still coming through. That glue is not dry yet, but it should still, this, the light should come through just fine either way. So I'm going to hold it over my one light. And yep, the light comes through great. Okay, so when we assemble him, I'm actually going to elevate the muzzle from the back of his face. So I, I'm going to kind of sandwich it like this. But can you see how we've got the rest of this sticking out? That's not pretty. Nobody wants to see that. So we're going to use the, um, the scarf and maybe a little bit of poly to cover it up. I'm just going to put the lid on my glue so it doesn't dry out. But let's see here. I'll go ahead and glue his ears in place. If you wanted to, you could take the time to add a little bit of color, some shading to his ears. You can see on Santa Claus, I actually shaded the outside of his beard and I colored his nose and I rosied up his cheeks a little bit. That's completely optional and I'm going to just show you the fast way without it, but do know that that option only takes another minute. All right, so the cool thing about this die set is that each one of the top pieces, the hat, the, all of them, have a little hole at the top so you could easily turn it into like an ornament or a gift tag if you want. Since I wanted to sandwich the gift card in, I'm not using this part as a tag, but Santa, I actually put the hole in his hat right up there, lined up with my the hole in the tag. Okay, so that's in place. And now I want to kind of figure out where, so before I stamp or put it all together, I wanna to make sure to stamp where that button is gonna be. So I'll kind of lay it out here and I know that I want his muzzle to kind of come up over his eyes a little bit. So let's see how high we can get this. And I'm going to press the button so that I know. I can't cover his eyes completely. That works. So that's about the right place here. And then let's make sure, see if I need to angle it one way or the other to get stuff hidden. In fact, I know that I'm going to have to angle it a little bit there to hide the rest of that. So let's see, something like that. Okay, and I can see that right here is where my button is gonna end up being. So before I go too much further, I wanna make sure that I stamp the word push here. And I may even use the little arrow from that stamp set to indicate where that goes. So I've got my Misty. This is the mini Misty. I tell you, I have the full-size Misty and the Mini Misty, and whenever I can, I use the Mini Misty because it's smaller. It takes up less space on my desk. Um, I considered getting the big 12-inch one, but I don't have 24 inches available on my desk. <laughs> so I tend to grab this one whenever I can. Okay, let's grab that stamp set. And because this is a busy pattern, I'm going to go ahead and emboss it in white. Let's see, we've got the word push. And I think I'm actually going to use the little arrow as well. These are great stamps if you have a lot of interactive cards. If, if you make different types, the, uh, the sentiments in there are perfect to let people know what they need to do. So I'm going to use just my craft pick to kind of put it there so that it doesn't stick to my finger. Small stamps are like that, right? And this one's a little bit bigger, but still wants to slide around. Okay. And you can see I've already got some other greetings in there. That was for the back of the tag, because um, I already made Santa Claus. So I want to emboss this, so I'm going to use my little powder tool. 
And then I'm going to stamp with Versamark ink. And whenever I stamp words, I try to just have a soft touch. If you push down really hard, those words will spread out. So I, I try to go slow or just a soft touch there. And it's easy to give it a second push if you need to. Now, just emboss it in white. There we go. Okay, so we've got the word push, and notice that it's still, it's a little busy in that background. So I am just going to take, let's see, pink works. And whatever ink is on my brush here, just going to kind of add it to it and then buff it off. There we go. Now it shows up a little bit better. And now we can start putting them together. So I can't swing him too high or that corner will stick up. But I think right around here. And again, it's easy to push the button to kind of line things up. And I want to go ahead and get this in place. There we go. So I'm going to glue just the bottom of his scarf to the bottom of his muzzle. Maybe it'll be easier if I flip it over here. There we go, just like that. And then I've got this lined up. That works. So I'm going to use a little bit of double stick tape here on the battery clip itself just because it's easier to line up in that direction. I'll actually put two pieces. I just realized you can actually tear sequang tape. I don't know why. I thought you always had to cut it, but you don't. <laughs> Okay, so we'll line this back up so that the button is here and his nose. It's a little easier to see from the back side that that light is right under the nose. Maybe come a little bit higher. There we go. And a little bit of it is going to kind of peek out there oops, and there. So let's adjust it down a little. There we go. Perfect. I'm squishing it down. Okay, so now I'm going to use some more of this tear tape or score tape. On the back. And I'm going to line him up. There we go. Sorry about that just like this. And I was doing it in my hand so that anything that hangs down won't get stuck anywhere else yet. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of place him, eyeball him on this circle on the tag. I think I like that position. 
There we go. So that extra is down there. And then I can just add some glue to the back of his face and his ears. And get him stuck down. Remember those little eyes? I'm going to use smaller tweezers for those. And just a dab of glue. And piece them right in. Better than no eyes, right? When that's dry, I'll come back in and give it a little bit of like white gel pen highlights. Okay, so now I want to add a couple pieces of holly just to kind of brighten him up a little bit. Maybe one up here and that little bit, I want to kind of hide a little bit more of that light. So one right there, I think. So I've got one set of these little red berries that I've already cut out, and then I'll just cut out the other one so you can see how I did that. I go back and forth between my small tweezers and my bigger tweezers, just depending on what I'm actually cutting. So you can see I only partially die cut the holly because I didn't need the whole thing. You can see that? And just where the berries connect is where I will cut them off. And you don't even have to be perfect because nobody will know. Okay. Very quick and easy. Now I'll just glue these in place. I think I want it like that. Maybe more in the center. And I don't want to cover up the word push, but I might actually cover up the button. There we go. I like that. Okay, so before I put the tag together, I want to do any little stamping because this guy is kind of thick now. You see, he's, he's kind of thick there. And then I want to use a little bit of um, stamping before before I put it all together. So, very quick, this is going to be the front of the tag, and this will be the back. So for the front, I decided that I wanted it to say Happy Holidays, and I've already got it lined up in my Misty. And again, I am going to emboss this one. Versamark. I'm using my Versamark to ink it up. Light pressure here. And I'll just do it a second time to make sure that I've got even coverage because I was just doing light pressure, so in case I missed anything, second time's the charm, right? it up real fast. And then now for the back of the tag, I've already lined it up from Santa, where it'll say open me and two. And instead of from, I switched it out, or from Santa, it just now says from. 
just move that down here. And then since I'm embossing again, use my embossing tool or my powder tool. And I want one more magnet because it's kind of popping up. There we go. Light pressure. I'll just double check to make sure that I have it back in the corner. I don't know how many times I've accidentally shifted and had to start over. That's no fun, right? Okay. I think we've got it. I love watching embossing powder melt. It's magic, right? I missed part of the tube. There we go. Okay. So now to put it together, very simple. I'm actually going to put the, um, the foam tape around the edge here. I want to give myself enough room so that I don't seal up the zipper. Can you see the, the little zipper? This is the back side. So I can see it really well here. And I just want a little bit of foam tape around the edge. You could actually use glue if you're ready, but I'm going to show you this little trick so that if you don't have your gift card yet, um, you can still pre-assemble these and have them ready for when you do get your gift cards. I'm just using some narrow foam around the edge. I'm not worried about the back edge. I can go right over that, the back edge of the zipper. But the other side, you can see these, these two little dots. That's where the zipper starts. So I don't want to cover that part up. And if it's easier for you, you can sandwich the um, another gift card, like an expired gift card, in here while you're putting it together just to make sure that you leave enough space. But I know I've got plenty of room to work with there. And then I'll just put some across the top. And I'm not even worried if I cover that hole a little bit because I'm actually going to put some... Uh, some ribbon in there, so nobody's going to see it. And if you are working with strips of foam tape or a long roll of foam tape, one thing that I always try to do if I'm going to cut it, is I just put it on a piece of release paper, like from stickers or something, and then that way you can cut through it without gumming up your scissors. So if you have release paper on both sides, it's very easy to work with. I'm just going to double check. Yep, fits perfect. Okay, so now I don't want to seal this all the way up because that's actually an old gift card. Um, so what I'm going to do is just peel off the release paper for two sides. So the top and one side. And then I can sandwich them together and that will leave the bottom corner open. So I can slip the gift card in later like I did with Santa. This is always the slowest part, right? <laughs> here we go. So I've only taken release paper off the top and the side here. This, these two sides still have their release paper in place. And I want to make sure that I'm using the, the correct side that the, the two inside pieces are facing each other. And I can line it up, stick it down. 
and you can see that it still opens. I can still slip a gift card in there and then I can peel off these two little pieces of release paper and seal it up. And now we just need to get Rudolph on top. So I'm going to use more of my wet glue here because this is paper to paper again. And I kind of want to stick him up a little bit. That. And then just a little bit of ribbon at the top and this guy is done. Maybe I'll use the same. Yeah, Got a couple different options here. In the Hero Arts kit you also get some of this red and white twine which is fun and I've got some jute. And I'm going to put some of that together. And here's the trick with jute if you want to kind of fan it out a little bit if it looks too thick you can just untwist it and then separate it like you would with embroidery floss. See how different it looks? It will kind of fill out a little bit more. There we go and I'll trim all this up in a second. First, I want to pull a little bit of this back through and make sure that some of that twine is on top or the jute is on top. And then I will just wrap the red and white stripe around it and so I can tie a little bow. And this is all purely optional, just decorative, decorative elements, as many or as little as you want. And again, use up some of the scraps of your pattern paper and put them together. This is a fun project. Actually, you can have the kids working on this. They can help die cut in the evening. And then you guys can assemble them. Okay, and then I'm going to trim this and fan it out a little bit. Here we go. Oh, and I have these cute little mini clothespins, so I want one of these on here too. Here we go. We've got two ready for our gift cards. Push the button and their light, noses light up. Isn't that fun? Thanks so much for joining me. We do have a $50 prize for the hop. So I hope that you will hop along, leave comments as you go and enter to win. Um, all of the pertinent details are down in the description below. Thanks again for stopping by. If you're new to the channel, feel free to click subscribe and ring that bell. We've got lots of light up card videos to show and a lot of fun interactive cards as well.